Hey everyone, it's Victoria and welcome to my booktube channel. On here I'll be sharing all things book related, I'll be making weekly reading vlogs, I'll be sharing my introduction as a newbie reading for the very first time such books as the Cruel Prince series, the Akatar series, reading Twilight for the very first time, and finally reading Kingdom of Ash to finish the Throne of Glass series, which I had started last October, I think, September, October. So it's about time I finish it. But today I will be reading Chain of Iron, which you would have already seen from the title of the video anyway. But this is book two of the Last Hours series by Cassandra Clare, which is part of her Shadowhunters universe. So the third book of this series, The Chain of Thorns, will be coming out at the end of this month. And I will also be making a reading vlog for that one. But I was just really excited to get to this and I didn't want to wait any longer to start. So I've had kind of a complicated relationship with the Shadowhunters universe. I started the first book way back in high school in let's say like 2012 or something. Never finished it. <laughs> Gave them a try again last year and I ended up loving them, reading them all the way through. I read the Infernal Devices trilogy twice. That one is my favorite. I have not finished the, what's called the Dark Artifices, yeah, these ones. I have not finished them, I mean to this year, and I have read the very first one of this, which was Chain of Gold. So in this one we follow the children of the characters from the Infernal Devices. So we follow mainly Cordelia Carstairs, and something bad has recently happened in her family and they need to relocate to London. Now, London, for some reason, has been very quiet on demon sightings lately, but all of a sudden we start getting appearances of sunlight walking demons, which is not a thing we've seen before. So when she's in London, she re-meets her childhood friends, James and Lucy Herondale, and the main point of the book is following their friendships, their relationships, and how they all evolve, but then also how everybody needs to come together to defeat these new kinds of demons, and while doing that, some of the characters we follow discover that they have secret powers, and it follows them understanding what they are and how to control them. So I started this October, I think it was 19th, and I only finished it on November 2nd, so that means it took me almost two weeks to read this, which is very slow for my reading speed, even for a book that's kind of larger like this. I <laughs> looked it up. I apparently only gave this a 3 star rating, but I think now in hindsight I would give it a, at least a 3.5, 3.75 because I guess I thought it was slow and it was very hard to identify and distinguish all the characters at the beginning because there were just so many, but I did write that I teared up at a couple times and that I was very willing to read the second book when it came out and that is what we're doing today. <laughs> so I'm very excited to start reading this even though it is you know, quite chunky as most of her books are and i hope you will follow along on this experience with me and i will update you guys soon
and I have my first update for you guys on this book. I am currently 165 pages in, so about this much. But it's a decent chunk of progress I made. And so far, I'm already enjoying this one so much on the first one. My criticism about the first one was that it, I found it took a while to get to know the characters, but in this one that actually really paid off. I found I was able to just jump right back into the characters. I feel like I know them all so well now, and they make me individually, each of them, just really happy. Matthew's lines, Ma Matthew's hilarious. Thomas, also he, he was feisty at one point, and I, I liked that for Thomas. It's really easy to get back into their camaraderie and their friendship, and now that there is kind of a different storyline happening, we get to see how they're still all there for each other. One thing I find extremely helpful in her books is that she kind of subtly hints back at what happened in the previous books, which is great for me because I don't have the best memory after I finish reading a book. Like I don't remember anything really about the first one. It was really hard to summarize it in that previous clip. And she just hints enough that I can actually remember. It jogs my memory just enough that I can remember exactly what happened and what the scenario was in the first one. So something I was unaware of going into this book was that this is actually a winter setting, which is really nice. There's a lot of descriptions of looking out at snow-covered branches, ice-covered branches, everything like that. Another thing I was unaware of until I read the flap here is that this has a serial killer aspect to it which is really interesting. It's reminding me a lot of the Dark Artifices so far, and I did enjoy the books I had read of that. So hopefully that ends up being somewhat enjoyable. What really, really hooked me in this book was the very first paragraph. Let me see if I can get it. Um, hold on, nope. Here, and I kind of have already been like underlining stuff. It says, it was strange and novel to have a human body again to feel the wind stirring his hair and the cold particles of snow stinging his face as he made his way along the cobblestones, to swing his arms and measure the new length of his stride. Like, I was captivated. That, that just, it sealed me in and I've been just reading straight since then. There have been just some other really, really great lines. Like, oh, here was Matthew's funniest lines about sledding. I've come to bring you to a large hill which we will both hurtle down on rickety, out-of-control bits of wood. And I have the uh, Collector's First Edition, so I've got all these really pretty like, pictures. Like this one of Matthew. And they're just so nice when you get to flip to one of them. I can see why some people weren't great fans of this book based on it opening with a certain trope that I know a lot of people don't like. And I find there's also a lot of miscommunication in Cassandra Clare books, and that can kind of cut people off from wanting to continue them quite often, but I'm doing okay with it so far. I'm just kind of surpassing what I would normally criticize a little bit, because I normally wouldn't enjoy it so much either, but I really just want to enjoy this book and dive into another big fantasy book. So I'm going to continue to suspend my disbelief on certain things. In this one, she's actually been very heavy on the descriptions of character clothes and settings and decorations, and it's been really, really nice. I find in a lot of fantasy novels, they will kind of skip over that stuff, give you a very broad overview. But in this one, it's very, very heavy. It's easy to picture everything so well. So, so far, this is looking really, really good, and I'm excited to make a lot more progress. I am looking forward to updating you guys again. So it's almost seven at night. I am currently having supper and watching some sprints hosted by Liv's Library and Kendall from Bookphoria, who I will link in the description. But I just got to a part where I now hate a side character. I can't really go into it without giving spoilers, so I'm gonna, I think, just attach a timestamp. So if you don't want spoilers, you can just skip to whatever time I've written that it ends at. But Elias, <laughs> the way 
he's asking for money and like talking smack about James's family and even Cordelia wanting to deprive her of her parabatai ceremony is just it's not cool not top-notch dad not not great at all on top of past behaviors and showing up drunk for it as well I just <sighs> I'm currently at 258 pages. Uh, that's still like 400 plus more to go. But we're getting there, we're getting there. I intend to continue these sprints and hopefully I'll have another update soon enough. Also, another thing was once she had introduced Philomena as a character, I just I knew that something was going to happen to her, like we weren't made to feel a great connection to her or even know much about her as a person, so it didn't really surprise me much that she was the next victim, but I just, yeah, I, it didn't quite grip me as I wish it did, but it's just for that reason that we weren't given much reason to care for her, except for what the other characters say after her death. Yeah, we'll, we'll continue. See. It's only been like half an hour and oh, that was well done, Miss Claire. <laughs> well, I was just talking about Elias. Yeah, Elias is no more. Elias was the next victim. That was well done. That was well done. Like, he's still Cordelia's dad, so... Oh. And Sona has the baby, and this... Oh. That was shocking. That, that was a good, good twist. Oh. Okay. I'm gonna keep reading after that. Another thing is that, like, it seems like Elias recognized the killer, and I have absolutely no theories other than, like, it's a guy, because we were told that explicitly, but I have nothing else, which is very uncommon for me. I usually have at least one running theory, so I am looking forward to see who exactly it is, and hopefully I will be shocked by it. It is now the next morning. I'm so glad I jumped in on those sprints last night. They were extremely helpful. After reading another chapter this morning, I have now finished part one and I'm on part two. I definitely have some thoughts on this. I'm still enjoying it. Uh, there's just some things I have slight issues with or I wish they could have been done a little bit differently. I'm just gonna check my notes here. First of all, I would definitely not recommend reading this if you were still wanting to read The Dark Artifices. That series is really good, I recommend it, but this series does contain some spoilers for it, in particular this book does. There's some very important stuff that comes into play in those books that I don't want spoiled for you because it, they're such great books and I really want you to enjoy them to their fullest extent. I will say that one of the main plots of this book does heavily rely on miscommunication, so if that is very annoying to you as a trope, I would maybe steer clear of this one, but then you'd have a hard time with all Cassandra Clare books, I think, because they all kind of rely on that a lot, and especially in the romances, but even the friendships sometimes, there's always something there. <laughs> I thought the bit with Wayland the Smith was very interesting. It was really nice to see some of our own legends, like, Excalibur and Arthur being incorporated into it, but even with how interesting that whole inclusion was, I felt the issue with Cortana was very quickly resolved and easily resolved. I know it will come back into play later, but the issue that it was having as a sword was just done and over just like that. So I mentioned last night I didn't have any ideas as to who the killer was yet, one of our characters seems to have an idea about what's going on and I really hope he's wrong just because it kind of feels like a cop-out. 
I, I don't know exactly how to explain that. It just feels kind of like an easy way out and a way to cause more drama between the characters and yeah but based on the way how he came to that conclusion was written I don't think it is the conclusion like it wasn't very I don't think it is the actual person because it wasn't written as a surprise at all it was just gradually there and we could easily follow along and usually when she does include killers they're more of a shock reveal so I'm hoping that's still to come because I do really want that shock surprise. I'm a little disappointed with how part one ended. Like, I kind of expected based on how one of our characters was acting that this certain thing would end up happening with them and the other part of our plot. So I don't know, there's just something about the writing in this one. It's still very good, but then the plot seems to be explicitly given to you fairly early on and there's hasn't been any real surprise yet so far other than the one I discussed last night but I'm still very excited to keep reading I feel like I've said that many times already but I haven't enjoyed a fantasy book like this in a while so I do potentially want to finish it today but I'm not going to put that pressure on myself because I do want to continue enjoying it so we shall see how much more I can get done before the next time I update you all again. So I judged too quickly. Uh, the character who thought they knew what was going on with the killer was wrong. So that's ha made me happy. Another thing I'm happy about is that the character I knew, I thought I knew what was happening with them. The author decided to take it into another direction. So that's great. to go off but something just happened and I need to keep reading and I can't I was just like <laughs> okay the oven settled now I can get back to reading <laughs> give it four and a half stars. <laughs> so the updates I have on part two, I love seeing Magnus in these other Shadowhunter books. He always just brings so much, I don't know, just humor and refinement to certain stories. But I thought in this one there was something slightly off about his character. I don't quite know how to describe it. He seemed a lot less Magnus-y, if that makes any sense. There was a lot of relationship development in this one. We got a lot more... Uh, no, that's just a spoiler if I say that. Ugh, no. In this one, it felt like we finally were given development in the relationships we were wanting to happen, and then Miss Claire just kind of pulls them out from you. Speaking of which, that ending was just mean. I'm so glad I read this one now so I don't have that much longer to wait. I only have to wait till the end of the month and however long it takes me to get the book here. And I will probably be jumping right back into that one, making a reading vlog for it, of course. And I just, I don't know how, if I had read it when I first got this book, I would have been able to last after that cliffhanger. I can see how some people don't like that ending so much because it's another use of her excessive miscommunication, but I, in this one I see kind of how it worked. In relation to this, I'm so glad that James finally figured 
something out about what was going on. Now you finally see clearly. Uh, going back to the relationships though, there's one character that you're, you're made to dislike, but there's something that could potentially be brewing with them and another character and it's so weird but like I actually kind of want to see that to see more of it which is weird because like you're supposed to really really dislike this character and yet you still want this great thing to happen for them very conflicted we'll see how it goes there was still great humor in this last like third I would say of the book but I feel when we got to the last quarter, it brought back the issue I had with the first book where it felt like when there was a big conflict, it was very quickly resolved. I felt that exact same thing with this last quarter of the book, which is why I'm only giving it a 4.5 instead of a 5. But overall, I did really, really enjoy my experience reading this book. I read it in three days and I'm looking forward to the third one. I want to thank you all very much for watching this video. If you liked it, please like, and if you want to as well, subscribe to my channel. I plan on getting at least two videos out a week. I will be doing more vlogs like this, weekend reading vlogs. I will be doing more chatty vlogs, potentially my top books of 2022. So I hope you will all stick around to see those. And thank you very much for being here once again, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.